So <coughs> this morning we saw how to read Nix code. Then we saw a bit of how the Nix build system uh, works, you know. And now the idea is uh, you've learned about all of this and you want to package something for our next package. Um, so I'm just gonna go over like a bit like the generic stuff, how to do a package uh, more in a generic way. And then we're going to talk about language specific packages, but that's gonna be up to you. So you have to ask me about things and uh, I hope that it's gonna be also a bit interactive. So, uh, next packages. This is our repository where we have all the packages. We have uh, 70,000 packages or something like that, all described in Nix and in that repository. And, but even after 70,000 packages, maybe there's some missing, right? Like there's always a new project or something. So <coughs> let's go over. This is uh, what Graham uh, presented, but a bit expanded. And you don't need to know the detail, but that's kind of the built-in derivation. And then in boot next packages, we bootstrap that, and you get this MK derivation. That uh, so SDN but MK derivation gives you a function that you can use to build derivation. And this function has a bunch of heuristics and utilities that make it convenient to build new packages. Um, so. The first thing is, remember Graham talked about the name? We actually have a, we can specify a P name and a version. And the name is going to be composed from the P name and a version, so that's a small detail. Then we have build inputs, which are dependencies that we need for the build. And then there's another attribute called native build inputs, which is also dependencies that we need for the build but that are only used for building the packages and are not going to be used afterwards. So just to make an example, um, you might need uh, libz as a dependency. And once you're finished building your projects, libz is going to be a dependency of the project. So that goes into build inputs. But maybe you have a pre-processing step like uh, yak or um, your, uh, GCC. GCC, yeah. GCC <coughs> is uh, used to build a project, but we don't depend on it afterwards. Then we put it in the native build inputs. You, if you put everything in build inputs, it's going to work fine. It's just that if you want to do cross compilation, then it's uh, useful to make the distinction. And we have uh, a few phases. So in the previous talk, we, we had the builder that builds something. And here we split the build into multiple phases. And this happened during the build time, one after the other. So we have an unpack phase that takes the source code and unpacks it into the build uh, environment. Then we have a patch phase that's useful to patch things if, for example, the upstream source code has a bug or a security vulnerability, we can use it to patch it. Then we have a configure phase that's usually, for example, if you have an auto tool project, it's going to call like a dot slash configure with some default attributes. We have the, find the build phase, which is, for example, running make, um, CMake, etc. Then the check phase that is optional, where you can run unit tests to check that the uh, project works. Then the install phase, where once you build the project, you want to send it to the dollar out, and that's where we—that's the install phase, basically. Um, and then after that, we have a fix-up phase, which is because each of these phases have default. Um, they have <coughs> default. I mean, in lots of cases, you don't really need to specify these. They have default implementation. So you want maybe to keep the insert phase, but you want to fix it after. So we have this phase to do that. And then there's a install check phase, which is like the previous check phase, except that you test the installation instead of the source code. So you make the distinction. 
And then finally, uh, this phase that nobody uses, uh, you can just read about it. Um, then, so I'm simplifying this. There's uh, more attributes um, there. We still have a meta attribute that we've seen also in the previous talk. And this is uh, just metadata that's used for our own tooling and also for the users that know about, for example, the project homepage, which license it's using. Uh, we can do things like um, easily with this. We can do things like make sure that we only build uh, GPL projects or we can filter out things. And then the pass through, which is, uh, I'm just going to talk about this right now. <laughs> so for each of these phases, we also have some extra arguments. So the unpack phase, we need the SRC uh, attributes. Well, that's where we fetch the source. We had the fetch URL previously. In the configure phase, we can pass some configure flags for all the tools. Um, I don't know. Is, has anyone uh, used uh, auto tools project before? <laughs> Raise your hands. <laughs> OK, so half of the room knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and then we also have an uh, outputs attribute, which is interesting. Basically, uh, we have this dollar out variable, right? And that's the default. But you can also send the results to multiple outputs. So for example, that's just to, for example, you build your project once, and then you want to send all the binaries into out, and the manual into another output. And that allows you then, once you have these two outputs, to just install the manual, or just install the binary or just you install the dev dependencies. And that way, when you install, you have a smaller package. Um, on top of that, we have some more heuristics. So if you add the, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, can you go back? Yes. Two slides, back again. Why is it called setup that is each? Oh, this, so this, this is, uh, yeah, good question. <laughs> so this, if you check out next packages and yeah. you access this path, yeah. you have access to the full uh, logic during the build. OK, yeah. So it's not, it's not completely related, but yeah, okay. this is basic. You can read this bash code if you know how to read bash. Yeah. Yeah. And you can uh, kind of see what, what, how it's being used exactly. OK, nice. Uh, any other questions? But so there's a special thing for the bit hook, and basically, when you produce a derivation, some of them have a special construct that allow to change how the bit is going to be done. Uh, one of them is the CMake, for example, project uh, package. Sorry. So if you have a project that's using CMake to build itself, you can just put CMake as a build input, and it's going to do the right thing. Uh, it, you don't have to run CMake yourself or anything. It's just going to change the default of um, parts of the build. Um, same for, so there's a few useful hooks. For example, there's an auto recon hook that is used to just run auto recomp because some of the auto tools packages are broken and we need that. There's a auto patch and hook which is again a bit more advanced topic but it changes the how the elf binaries are constructed to point the libraries to the right versions of things. So if they because we have the sandbox you can't load the, the lib from a different from the USO lib or USO local. So if you get binaries from the internet that you fetched, you can use this to automatically patch the binary so it loads the, the dependencies from your project. There's also a breakpoint hook that you can use. If you want to debug your build and it takes a long time, you can use that. And it allows you to drop into the build environment, so inside of the sandbox. That's kind of uh, advanced as well, but it's really useful. There's, um, 
Yeah, a few other tools like that. So let's say we want to build this uh, hello packages. How do we how do we approach the problem? So first thing we do is we look at the old packages that next. So now I need to go into the editor. So this, this is a special file in next packages where all the packages are referenced. And there is a lot of lines, 25,000 uh, lines. <laughs> and somewhere in here, we see there's a hello package that's being defined. So if you want to package your own thing, what you would do is first you find a location to put your package into the tree. and we have a few categories, so you try to find the right category. Um, that's a bit of a dark art thing. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, try to find the location that you think is right, and then when you send the pull request, you might get some feedback for a better location. And in here, so the first thing you do is you, you would write the So in here you have a default that mix, and you would write this file, and then you plug it on the top. And then once you have that, you can do mix build dash a hello, and that would access the attribute in the top level, and then build your project. Um, any questions so far? So I think we should uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe build, recreate this hello package and kind of go through the whole life cycle. Again. So how do you even start with that? Well, first, let's pretend that it's not package yet. You would typically go on the website. Okay, downloading hello. So they say you can use the FTP website and then you find the tarball of the release. So 2.10. There's a lot of releases for hello world packages. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things is you find the, the source code. And I'm going to make a hello over here. So what do we need? We need we know we need to fetch a uh, URL. And we need we know that we need the uh, stdn uh, that mk derivation. Oops. So for now, that's all that we know. And so we're just going to build uh, the standard thing. The package name is hello, and the version is 2.10. And we know that we need the source code from this URL. And we have some shell, we don't know which one, right? Okay. <coughs> so that's all we know for now. So let's try and build this. So in here, we pretend that this doesn't exist. So we would have Oops, wrong. <laughs> now it was right. 
Let's we have our hello. Now we do next build. And it says, okay, hash has the wrong length. So here we have multiple. Uh, oh, yeah, we have a question. You can go back to your thing and uh, session. To the. Go back to your edit. So, so you can you open the file again? The. Yeah, the top level, this one? Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, and, and I noticed following what you were writing, um, you have the reflections of the file, which led me to a question that I've been wanting to ask for a while. Okay. Is in Vim, at least in the Vim world, besides Vim snippets and some plugins out there for syntax, is there anything else that anyone else is using that makes writing these a lot easier? In terms of auto completion or um, right. syntax checks? Well, <coughs> there is uh, the NixVim uh, plugin, basically which gives you syntax checks using the Nix um, instantiate. Shows you the errors based on the line number, so you can see that there are people people trying to do the Nix build. Uh, but it doesn't have auto-completion. The best editor for Nix at the moment is Emacs. I use both, so... Uh, Vim is just a little bit behind, but they're working on it. Uh, quite actively, if you want to take a look at the rebel, they might have something better. Yeah, yeah so I've been through like this packaging so many times that I no. just do like this. But yeah, there's uh, also a nice uh, language server protocol project that has been started. <coughs> yeah, if you go on uh, GitHub slash uh, mix dash community. This you will find a language server, but it's uh, still in development. Mix minus community, right? Yeah. Well, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we know we need a hash here, so we we have two solutions to do that. We can take the solution that we've seen before with Graham is uh, put a fake a wrong hash, and then it's going to tell us what is the right hash. <coughs> And there's another tool called next-prefetch-ul. And so you can do like this. And this is going to fetch the dartboard. Um, and we, ha we get a hash here. So you plug in the hash. Now we build. Okay, so here we see lots of things are happening. We just give it a source code and it's already doing a lot of things. So how, how is that possible? Let's just pause the build. Oh no. It's too no. <laughs> okay, so <coughs> That's all of the phases in action, basically. We see there's the unpack phase that just unpacks the source code. Then during the configure phase, it has a bunch of flags that are passed by default already. It detect detected that it's an auto tools project, so it's already doing the right thing. Now auto tools is running with the dot slash configure. We already gave up on this. No. So that's just the bit of first yeah. So now it's in the inst we should see the installing. So now we're in the in install phase. We skipped the build phase, it was somewhere over here. And then it's doing some fix-ups. So it's, uh, that's a few optimizations that we have in these packages to shrink the R path, which makes the binaries a bit smaller. She's zipping the man pages. 
extruding the binary. And that's it. Now we have our project here. So we have a dot slash results. Yes, question. Um, maybe, maybe I might, might be asking too much. Is it possible to show a similar workflow but using next wrapper? With next wrapper? Yeah. No problem. So you need an editor to edit the file. But actually, by while procrastinating for doing this talk, I added a edit command. So that's not uh, in next yet. Um, so in next REPL, you can do something similar. So you can load the next packages. So because we are in the next package repository, I can do this. Otherwise, you would do next packages like this, right? So I'm just using the current directory. And now all the variables are in the scope. Hello packages is here. And then I can say build hello, and it gives me the output. It's been already built, so. And I can edit hello, and then we're going back to here. Are you able to just build one of the phases? Uh, no, like the build is a single thing. If you want to split things up, you have to create smaller derivations for each of the things that you're going to build. You could use an inch shell. An inch shell. Yeah. To run each phase separately. Yeah, but you need the source code for it. No, you just need the derivation. If you run an inch shell minus a uh, hello. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do this. Or even in the next wrapper. So I th yeah, there's a um, uh, column S. So you do this, and then so I, I'm not really doing that. So you can do rerun the configure phase, mm -hmm. and uh, what is the install? Code. And <coughs> so one of the thing is that all the attributes that you set on the derivation are exported as environment variable inside of the build. So if we echo the install, um, no, oh no, because that's the default. We didn't set it, but uh, SRC we have access. To we know the source is the source code. The fetch phase. That's not set by uh, default. Because it's in the builder. Mm. Um, yeah, so I was really lucky in this project, right? Because <coughs> I. Uh, all the heuristics in next packages were able to determine what to build. And I have the so the binary is here. And I think we have the man page for the because we need the man manual for hello, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just wanted to talk about this because uh, all of the language specific packages are kind of built on this MK derivation. So the better you understand this, the better you can also hack on the other language specific things. Is there any questions? Is it is it completely unclear what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Good. And it's being a bit louder because we have to <coughs> sound it behind. Oh, right. Is that uh, better like that? Yeah, thank you. Well, I see that there are um, speakers here. Maybe uh, we could get a microphone. Mm. No, it's, it's too late to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that's the part I prepared for the talk. I think um, now I want to 
know about what kind of languages... Oh, okay, sorry, like a last point about this okay. is the call package. Yeah. What, the, what is this and why do we use it? In, um, so if we go back to the top level of packages, here, why don't we just do uh, imports? And then we know we're getting a function back, right? And then here we could do stdn is stdn, and fetchrel is fetchrel. And that would work, actually. But uh, call package is just a little utility function that injects automatically all the attributes that you depend on on, top level, on the function that you return. So just trust that. Plus, it provides some overriding capabilities. Um, it wraps your derivation so that you can then code override on, the, on top of it. Uh, which uh, is, yeah, I don't know how to explain that. <coughs> uh, that it uh, places some constraints on how you uh, create the, uh, the build derivation of the things that are called with pro package, or you just do your, you just do your thing and the pro package will uh, magically sort of work. Yeah, so call package um, takes the scope of next packages, so all of the attributes okay. you define here. Mm -hmm. So if you depend on uh, a word package, because now we have a new release of hello that you have to specify the <laughs> word dependency, yeah, the universe, yeah. uh, that would be another package, then either you would pass it here, but in this uh, hypothetical uh, scenario, here you just add, so you define the hello, the word in the top level, and then here you have access to word, and then you would put it as a build input uh, here. Okay. Yes? I, I keep adding it without actually knowing exactly what it does. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> you mean over here? Yeah. So that would be fine in here, but you don't need it because code package doesn't only add the values that are described, okay. so you're fine. What is it supposed to? Oh, uh, I was I covered this in the first talk. Okay. <laughs>
Um, so I don't know, we would re exit one maybe. And maybe uh, like that. So if we build this, that's rebuilding it. Okay, now we have the failure, and so here you could add a, there's a thing called a breakpoint hook, and then in the in, um, build inputs you add the breakpoint hook. You build. So the question is, why is it downloading the sources that were already downloaded? Yep. Uh, it's not. St it's, it's only doing the build of the derivation right now. It's not re-downloading the sources. Uh -huh. Should try to build a simple package like Chrome. <laughs> 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 Let's fall back on this because I don't know what's happening. So here it's just rebuilding the package. You can see. Okay. So what was the downloading status there? Um, I, I don't know. Like it uses the downloading status also for copying files from the next door. Oh, okay. So you already have the tarball for hello in the next door, but it has to copy it into the derivation again. Ah, okay. Yeah. And it also puts the downloads there because it's convenient, I guess. But as you saw, it did 0, 0 0.0 megabyte of download. Okay. Okay. So now we have this breakpoint, and we have this command. And if we make a new shell and we type the command, and right, I need I can't see NTR, so I can do. Here I have the CNTR now, and right, I need to be sudo. And uh, demo effect, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but with yeah, with this tool, you're supposed to drop into the built context. Where is the documentation about these uh, breakpoint hooks? In the file. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's why I gave the first talk on how to read Nix code, because <laughs> you end up on a lot of cases to actually read the code in Nix packages. Um, I know it's not that great, uh, but if you look at this, then you know that's, uh, that's the definition. And then you can look at uh, build support and breakpoint hook. And that's the implementation basically. And it's using a function, so you could you also have to look at the definition of makes the hook to see exactly what it is. Oh, and it only works on Linux. Yes, because it depends on uh, C groups and other things specifically. Is there a way to? Uh, uh, to uh, <coughs> not even start the build 
but just to get uh, uh, an environment when I can run each of the phases manually. Yes, uh, that's the next shell. Okay. So you can use this tool called next shell to load the sort of build environment, but it's not a sandbox. Okay. So it's not completely the same. Okay. So if you want to be exactly the same, you want to use this tool. Okay. But most of the time you can get away with doing the next shell and then run all of the phases by hand. So we do the unpack phase and etc. Um, with next shell, is it actually possible to call the operational? Is there like some bytes I'm not aware of? I usually use the stupid method of just taking the build inputs, putting it into a shell next, and then running it. I didn't figure out another way there. Um, I don't know, one very, do you know? I didn't understand the question. When there is a simple way to run next shell on a derivation directly without having to modify it to basically just, you know, the calling convention is different, right? No. As if you have a derivation, the derivation already knows all the inputs you have. That's so the only thing we have to do is run Nick shell with the derivation usually. Yeah. But uh, you have to, uh, the, the derivation is a function, right? Yes. So how do you put uh, the standard and all the travel things? Uh, can you use a Nick show derivation once on a derivation? For hello, for example. We can use Nix instantiate uh, to get the DRV file. And I'm just going to put it in driver. And then there's a show derivation. So yeah, we didn't look at the DRV file. What is in this file, actually? We, we missed that for now. So a DRV file contains things like that. So you have references to the outputs, the input SRCs. We see that the platform is uh, x x eighty six sixty four Linux. That's the builder script. All the environment variables. And yeah, that's it. Do you want to add? Well, for example, the standard n is a build input, which we put there, right? And then you see the path to standard n, and Nix automatically looks at all the paths in the derivation and makes sure that the output depends on it. So whenever one of the inputs changes, the whole build will change, and the hash will change, and you have to rebuild the whole thing. Um, in this case, uh, SRC is also a dependency, which is the tarball itself. So the unpack script also looks in the SFC. Uh, like these all become environment variables in the JavaScript that you write. It downloads the not downloads. It unpacks the SFC. The download step is a bit more complicated. Yeah. I'm not sure if you covered that already. No, I think we can skip it. For now. <laughs> so to piggyback from the previous question, um, there was a question in the back. Oh no, it's, it's on. All right. So, uh, now I have the derivation, uh, and the derivation, so what I'm not clear is, when we build uh, from Nix package, we use co-package to, uh, uh, to build that derivation. To, you know, to pass the arguments that you need to the imports. Okay, so when okay. we... So now, uh, if I want to try and actually instantiate this derivation with Nix shell, I have everything. I just need to pass the derivation to Nix shell, and then I will get the shell with everything ready to run manually the, the build set. Uh, yeah, I think you can also do Nix shell and then put the DRV file directly. It should work. So now I can do the configure phase, you know, while like the Unpack face first. Oh, and now we have an error, and we're triggering <laughs> okay, this. Yeah, because you have to export out, I think. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Thank you. In that case, you used that you used the version to invoke Nix shell, but we're likely using Nix shell 
because we haven't been able to get the package to build in the first place. So we might not have the derivation of the file yet. You will always have the derivation. Yes, you, so there's really two phases in X, right? There's an evaluation that produces the DRV file. So if, if you're, then it's a syntax or like coding yeah. error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then there's the big phase that builds the derivation. So that's that's <laughs> probably the best way to load it, which is to grab the derivation and involve in a unique shell so that you can go through all the different steps and probably try to patch files or stuff that just doesn't work. Yeah, that's a good one. And thanks for those pointers because I misunderstood you before. I meant running <laughs> it on the actual Nix file for the derivation, which obviously does not work, but this uh, helps a lot already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've always tried to use the, 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 the mix um, file to actually involve mix shell and now I realize that I've been doing it from the whole one. Yeah, me too, actually. Yeah. yeah, and it's a bit faster as well because evaluating mix packages take uh, a bit of time. So if I do like that, that's uh, 200 milliseconds um, that you waste every time on every cycle. <laughs> every little help. Yeah. So yeah, I think we covered that. And yeah, uh, just a question before we go forward, <coughs> if it's possible. When I in this mix shell, well, uh, I when I use how, for example, I I am still. Am I still building into the mix store? Or no? no. Where I So the way the build is structured inside of the sandbox is that you have basically the root directory mm -hmm. and a root a mix store directory mm -hmm. with all the dependencies that you can rely on. And the standard and make derivation will give you a slash build directory, which is also uh, in the um, it's also in the opt environment variable, if I remember right. Should always be. So it's a directory where you put your outputs in. Uh, if you use shell, you will not have the opt environment variable. You have it, but it's not writable, actually. Yes. OK, and so how can I test that what I'm doing is correct? To make your own directory instead. Okay. You can set out to a directory that you control, okay. and then it will just use that to build there. I have, a, I have a question about, uh, so here we, we were talking about debugging uh, the build phase, but how about debugging uh, if I have an, a, a syntax error on my uh, Nix code? Right. Is there a, 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 a step in debugger or? No, uh, it's or not essentially. So any tips about debugging uh, actual uh, syntax error in Nix? Uh, let's try and produce a syntax error to, to see what happens. <coughs> um, so if you, there's a few issues that you could have. For example, uh, you could have something like this. Mm -hmm. So now if I need to build hello, it says cannot curse an integer to a string <coughs> at uh, this file, line 4 and 14. And basically that's because you're trying to do, uh, like, it doesn't do automatic conversions of okay. strings. So in that case you would have to, ah. I imagine that's your source, you would call the two string, and then now you're, you're good. Um, but the, not all problems are as easy as yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so one of the things that you can do is you can add asserts. So in here, for example, let's say the breakpoint hook is a thing, but I'm not sure what it is. So I can add, add here an assert. And I can say uh, lib uh, is derivation. Oh, we don't have lib, so. STM dot okay. Now let's see if it builds. 
but that's fine. But now, ah, oh, sorry. Imagine it's um, maybe we think it's a string. Mm -hmm. Now it says assertion failed, and it gives you the location. So if you sprinkle your code, uh, you can work it out like that. You can also show trace. Yes. Um, so there's another utility called uh, built-ins that trace, and basically you can put a string here, and that's itself. It's a function, so you need to wrap this most of the time into parentheses. Now every time you evaluate this, it's gonna trace you get the trace value here. Okay. So you, then you can do things like two string or and actually there's a there's a lib stm that's lib that trace val I think. And you can use that to report. It gives you the that's the value of the breakpoint hook. <coughs> right. Um, okay, maybe a last thing on that. Uh, yes. Is, uh, is built-in always in scope? Yes. So it doesn't come from like standard environment or something? Yeah, it's built into the language. Okay. There's a, like the, there's a few top level, like two strings and map, etc. And then the rest is shared into built ins. <coughs> and if you want to discover them, you do misrepl and you do built ins dot and you get the, the list. Uh, just a last thing, maybe for example the install phase you're happy with the defaults but you want to still add something to it. So we have like a post install, so there's a convention that says pre and post for all of the phases. So you can say post install I also want to add this other file to the output maybe or something like that. So that's uh, and you can do pre and post, that's useful. I don't know. Something. Okay. So <coughs> now we cover the normal NCDF um, K derivation. And there's wrappers for many, many languages. And uh, I don't think we have the time to do all of them. Yes, but 30 minutes left? Mm. Skip, you, you talk with the over already? Because you oh. have like sediment break and in between that. Okay. So maybe we should pick uh, one language or. Okay, shout the language that you want the most. I don't. Python. <laughs> oh, oh. Python. Rust. No chairs. <laughs> yes, just. I. No, you wanted Java. to ask something? Or? Yeah. Java. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Asco. What the? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I heard Python the most. <laughs> So for Python is, uh, well actually it depends. So f there's a lot of different ways of doing things in, in uh, Next. 
and it depends if you want to package for next packages or if it's your own project and that makes a big difference and actually you guys are missing out on uh, another talk right now that talks about the nuances about uh, language integration but basically if you build your own project then you have lots of rebuilds because you're changing your source code and you're going to have different constraints than next packages where ideally you build it once and then it's finished. Um, so for Python, we have a bunch of tools that exist. Uh, I only listed one here. There's PyPyTunix, uh, PyPenf to Nix, uh, Poetry to Nix now, which is a the latest addition. Um, but if you want to package for next packages, what you, you just what you do is you go into packages top level Python packages, and that's where we have all the Python packages. So it's a bit like the old packages, the next, but that's just for Python. And then you just look at how it's being done, and you copy how they they do the packaging. For example, uh, let's take Asana. There's uh, Asana default at next. And that's, uh, you just write build with Python package. And it's the same principle where you look for the source code, the version, and then you use this fetch so we have different types of fetcher. We've seen fetch URL before, but we have a fetch from GitHub that's kind of useful. There's also a fetch PyPy that can load from directly from the PyPy archive. Um, <coughs> so you fetch your source, and then in your inputs, you put the Python dependencies that you have. So if your project needs a, I don't know, request, and you put here. Um, Can you explain the difference of the propagated build inputs versus the build inputs versus the naked? Right. <laughs> so, there's a whole match matrix actually. Um, so, the propagated attribute means that you want to record that it's a dependency at runtime. So, and most of the time, you don't need to do this because the dependency is uh, already into the output and this actually scans the output and that's how it de determines how you have runtime dependencies between things. I don't think we explained properly but basically once you build the package the DRV defines the build dependencies but then at the end, very end it's going to scan the installed uh, depend the sorry the build results in the out and look at for it's actually doing a grep of the slash next slash store and looking for all the references to other packages and that's how you know that you have build de uh, runtime dependencies for a uh, package so you don't download GCC to run your project you just don't know the results right. But if your result depends on libz, it's going to be a reference in your C program on libz.so. That's how it knows that it also needs to download the libz. Um, does it make sense? Yes. But this is not recorded in the uh, DRV file, I guess. Right, so in Python, we have a problem because yeah. we, mm -hmm. we just have dynamic stuff, so we don't have a reference. And so the propagated <coughs> means actually also record this as into the output. And we can actually, if you want to drill down how it works. Hopefully it's already there, yeah. So we have a special folder called next support. And you find uh, the propagated build inputs here. It's just regarded as a reference here. Yes, does propagated uh, dependencies have to be defined explicitly, though? 
So most of the time, no, but okay. in Python, because it's dynamic language. Okay. And because when you want to run Asana, you need to be able to load all the uh, dependencies. That's why you put it in there. But you might have a dependency, for example, if you use, uh, let's go back to the Asana. Here we have checking box, for example. That's a Python specific thing. So PyTest is your test framework for Python. And you only care because you want to run the tests when you're building the package. But once you test passing, you forget about it. Yes. Well, I've, I've never had much to work uh, using Nick's tooling in the Python world because most of my uh, real world projects simply use uh, a, requir uh, a requirements txt file mm -hmm. and a bunch of other developers using whatever OS that they choose to use, which yeah. is perfectly fine. And I've tried by to mix, tried a bunch of different tooling on them, and I've always found them either too slow, mm -hmm. they would take a long time to generate the versions, and then I would find that uh, they might work when I'm lucky with the current new uh, Python version package with uh, my current mix packages mm -hmm. uh, version. But the majority of the, the projects out there will also provide you with a Python version file which dictates which Python version to use in test. Yeah, right. And then kind of that will always led me to I, um, I haven't been able to find a way to Play this thing in a single day version, I want to be able to use this Python version with these requirements text file to, to, to cause all these different Python yeah. versions as well. Yeah, so Python is tricky, right? Like um, here the approach that we have is we have one version of each library, right? And then if you add your project, you hope that the dependencies that you have are going to be the versions that are already in the Python. Uh, packages, which can be problematic because you can have conflicting dependency uh, requirements between two different Python projects. Um, and <coughs> other issues with uh, Python packaging is that the uh, whole ecosystem depends on a uh, set of the PI, which is really hard to resolve at evaluation time in Nix because we don't want to run any code there and it needs to be pure. And because setup the pi is a Python pr uh, script, mm -hmm. it can give you di different results uh, if you run it on Windows or Linux. And so you don't have a static dependency tree that you can build on, on top of it. And that's why I mentioned Poetry to Next, because there's this new project called Poetry that doesn't use setup the pi, but it has its own uh, Tamil file where you have all of the dependencies and it has a proper log file. So I would say that's really the goal. To, I think it's we'll move everyone to this. But sometimes if you package uh, an upstream project, it's kind of hard to ask them to switch to virtual first. And yeah, yeah. That, that's been my experience. But it's always been the requirement stop. text is the one who has a specific Python version. Right. Always has to call back to uh, the doctor. Yeah. So, just the last, uh, maybe, um, last parting words is if you want to find out more about each of the languages, how they work, usually it's again you just look up the attributes and you find the other packages that are being built and you copy and paste, and you, that's how I learned basically. Um, that's kind of the brute force approach. <laughs> and then uh, we have a manual, so I don't know if it's in the, on the Nexus website. I think it's a bit confusing, but basically you have multiple sections on the site. There's the slash Nexus, which is just for the Linux distribution. And here you have a, a manual. Ah, if I can type. So that's the manual for NixOS. Then we have one for the Nix 
interpreter. And finally, we have one for Nix packages. And the one in Nix packages has everything but. So if, if we search for Python, there's going to be some references here on how to do Python packaging with some more documentation. So that's not easily searchable, that's what I wanted to mention. Right? They have an official list of packages uh, with um, one reference package per uh, language. Because I guess that there are many packages for, for packages of uh, kind of language, mm -hmm. but they may not follow each the same methodology. Right. And maybe there is one package which is better. Um, so the question is, is there a reference package for every language? And not that I know. Except the hello package. <laughs> okay, so should we take a break? Thanks.